actually the uh, Bell 47 was actually first produced in 1920, possibly as early as 1910, um, but around 1920 or so, I was producing them. I also produced the Kamatov um, KA-26 as well, and I have other videos on those. But they were actually produced in, um, well, I mean, probably first produced in Germany and Russia, but also in Korea and a couple different countries actually produced them. They were, uh, I offered them for about initially $6,000 or 6,000 pounds, and um, 6 to 12,000 pounds or dollars. And um, we got too many orders, I believe, and they were... Our orders went through the roof, and I actually had to build two more facilities just to keep up with demand. And I think we actually ended up raising the price to about eighteen thousand dollars because at six thousand dollars, and I only uh, and I only I said, well, because we got too many orders. So I was like, um, okay. But then again, six thousand dollars back then was a lot of money back in nineteen ten or so. Um, Relatively, it'd probably be about, well, I don't know. I mean, relatively speaking, width of inflation and everything else is probably offered for about three three thousand five hundred initially, if you count if you if you take into account um, inflation and all that, which would be a lot of money back then. But then again, it was a very state of the art helicopter uh, back then. So, but I mean, it was the smallest helicopter that I was willing to build, and a very simple one to build at that. It's just an engine and, and basically stuff. So we got quite a few orders and a lot of people were actually using them for crop dusting and all that other stuff, although it doesn't really have that much power. Um, they had to really make the engine a lot more horsepower. The initial ones were a little doggy and a little sub subject to wind gusts and all that. But by the time we uh, perfected it, by the time the Bell 47 came around, they were pretty much um, perfected. But there was, I guess you could say there was a Bell 1, Bell 2, Bell 3, Bell 4, and then all the way up to 47. Um, initially, I initially offered it and was producing it, of course, um, along with the Kamatov um, uh, 2026 or whatever, that, that series, which was initially in, in Germany and offered by Renault Manufacturing, and then later on in other places. So, as we moved around. Like I said, we had to build new facilities. We could build... Building one prototype is nothing really, but building hundreds or thousands of them is quite a different story. Um, we could produce one or two fairly easily and and um, because they're one-offs and then uh, test it out. And so initially 1910 or so um, and 1920 or so, we were actually doing product testing and everything else like that. Of course, what I know and what other people know is quite a bit different because I am... LS, Lucifer, the inventor of flight. So I was actually producing these things and actually had to do with the building of the factories and everything else. And they're my factories and technically I'm rich off of it. And I bought a, got a, bought a country called America. I also paid cash for Germany. There were, there were, there were countries back then that I literally wrote checks for, like um, Italy and Poland. Um, I bought the countries. We just they just simply drove around to all the different houses and places and said how much for your house, <laughs> and uh, or your property or the land, the ground underneath it. You don't have to destroy your house. We just want the land. So we want right to the land basically. So that's how Germany. They say Germany uh, increased in size, and it did and it didn't. I was increasing in size um, with with my land. I was buying it. L S Lucifer. Um, uh, star basically and basically I was buying Germany I bought Poland and I also bought Italy and I bought quite a few countries and eventually later on I bought Russia um, and then later on I found we found diamonds and stuff like that in Russia but the Bell helicopter was was first initially uh, introduced or first built probably around 1910 and then in production somewhere around 1925 I guess 1930. Ish. It hit the market before, slightly before the um, before the Kamatov helicopter, because it's a much more simple design, and we're working on much bigger hel hel helicopters as, as well. The Kamatov 26 was actually a much more complicated design, 
And, but it was safer for the public, like they were safe for the wife and children, you could say. Anyone can fly a, a Kamatov helicopter. And it uses, but it uses a light homing engine. I don't know. It depends on, on, some people love the other helicopters. Some people love the Bell um, uh, 47. They're both produced by me, basically, uh, or was, were produced by me, along with the Titanic. Like I said, LS Shipyard, um, what is Belfast? Um, <laughs> you know, um, also the LC Shipyard, uh, uh, stock market, all that kind of stuff. Like that was, a lot of that was all me. And, um, you know, I'm this epic inventor, very old. Anyway, um, and relatively different. But anyway, um, so I was the actual inventor of these helicopters, pretty much. So anyway, no one knows more than me, basically. Or no one knew more than me, pretty much. Because I knew when things were first, first, first done. Um, anyway, though, it's a, quite a nice helicopter, and um, the hardest part of the Bell, and initially when it was offered, I guess the Bell 1 or Bell 2 didn't have the bubble top, and were more of an open canopy, and there might have actually been some with glass, because we had glass technology, but we really didn't have the plastic. The hard part and the, and the amazing part about the Bell is that we finally got the plastic, although the plastic had a problem, as most people would know, that it tended to turn yellow over time, as all plastic does. So that was the only problem, and we actually, I think we might have included one extra bubble top eventually when we did perfect the plastic in the price of the helicopter. Like, after so many, that's, a, that's another thing that's saying about LS and who I was, was uh, we, when we knew of a problem, we would say, well, it will turn yellow in X amount of time, but you'll get a new bubble top, so don't worry about it. It's included in the price of the helicopter. So we would often do that. So people would buy from us because, or buy from me because, you know, I did things like, well, this is going to break and this is going to wear out, but we've included it because we know, so we'll warranty it. Um, tell, just telling you now that after so many hours, you need to do this or whatever. So I believe the first bells were sold and with, with the understanding that in three or four years, um, they would have to bring it back in and we would replace the bubble top. I think they would pay for the repair of the bubble, for the actual labor of the repair of the bubble top, but we would supply the bubble top because we were still working on the plastic because it wasn't quite perfected, but it was cool. So, but I, but I think it turned yellow in three years or some amount of time because of the UV, UV rays. We didn't have the plastic. It wasn't, you know, 1926 and 1930, we didn't have the plastic quite right. It was, we were still working on it. We didn't really get that until about 1930, 1940. Um, somewhere around there. I think we had it somewhere around 1925 or so. So anyway, um, like I say, the Valkyrs jet, a lot of those things, uh, the P-51 Mustang, um, I was involved in all that, in all those aircraft. So anyway, yep. So anyway, I, I know a lot about a lot of the aircraft. Um, and the United States, or what is the American government, would have to be buy had to be buying all their stuff from me so <laughs> that's the beauty part <laughs> when nixon and, and all those presidents were like ring ring we're trying to take over your country when we need helicopters to do it <clears throat> yes um well i will supply them but it's going to cost you <laughs> anyway anyway them me um so when they were buying helicopters, they were buying them for me in my manufacturing because I invented them and I developed them and I was producing them in Germany and Europe. So anyway, later on I bought America and basically owned it. So anyway, yeah. So about those information facts, well, I mean, a lot of this stuff, you would have to talk to the designers or the owner of the company to actually figure it out or know about it. So the market, I'm sorry, the market is about a couple years behind what I would know or, like I said, aircraft were actually around, well, as early as like like year 1200 or so, I mean, and maybe even a year as, as, as early as 300, actually. But they weren't, a lot of people didn't know them, there weren't that many around. It was relatively new science and technology. Later on, as time goes on, then we had more and more people saw them. 